A lot of test prep programs claim that they will improve student scores, but a retake may improve test scores without the expense of test prep. Eight students took the LSAT twice to see if there was an improvement on the second attempt. Use the results below the Wilcoxon sign ring test at a 5% significance level to test the claim test the claim that there is a difference between the two attempts. What do these results say about the test prep industry? Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the uh, problems details. And obviously it's a Wilcox and sign ring test, that's clear. They want us to use that method. We're testing the claim that there is a difference between the two attempts. So what we want to say about this then, if we're going to be saying that there's a difference, is that the medians are different. So basically the claim can be written in a couple of ways. You can say, first of all, that the median for the first attempt is not equal to the median for the second attempt. And notice how I'm putting them in order as I see the data, one and then two. Now that is the same as, if you wanted to rewrite this, you could actually say that that means the same thing as, if I move this guy over, it'll mean that the differences, right, between the medians is going to be not equal to zero. Because when I move this over, there's nothing over here except for zero. And this one comes over, it'll be n1 minus n2, and that can be substituted as n, or the median difference. By the way, I'm saying n, of course it's eta, the Greek symbol eta. But anyways, it's eta sub d, which means the median difference. It's not equal to zero if, once we move this over. So this is the possible statement. Now this implies that it's a two-tailed testing procedure now, right? Two-tailed because the claim here having not equal to means it's the same as HA. So our HO, of course, will convey the idea that the median difference is equal to zero, because that's the opposite of not equal to, and HA will have, obviously, that eta d is not equal to zero, since the claim has a not equal sign, it's the same as HA. All right, so at this point, when we look at HA being not equal to, we know it's a two-tailed test. Let's keep that in mind for later. Let's also write down the alpha, which is, in this case, 5%, and let's count up the n for the problem. But we want to work with the n actually later. First, we want to do some manipulation with the data, and then we'll come back and report the n. So let's do the manipulation with the data. What we want to do is to take all the data and to form subtraction column called the differences. So I'm going to actually take the differences. You see I started to begin to do this and then I thought it's worthwhile to maybe do it on the video so you can see how it's done. Of course I think most of you can tell how it's done. I take this number and I subtract off 165 and I get the answer negative 4. 143 minus 148 I get negative 5. 142 minus 150 I'll get negative 8. 152 minus 154 I'll get negative 2. 145 minus 145, I get zero. This is very important that you see that we got zero here. We're going to have to drop this cell out of the running then, because a zero doesn't give us any information. We're going to have to drop that and discard it as an n value, and we won't use it. All right, then 147 minus 152, we get negative five there. Uh, 143 minus 150, you get negative 7. And lastly, 155 minus 159, you get negative 4. So again, we see a scenario where they're almost all negative. I promise that doesn't always happen in all cases, but it does in this one, so we, we run with it, right? We can't do anything about that. All right, then we take the absolute value of the differences. Of course, that would be 4, 5, 8, 2. I'm not going to put anything here because we don't want to use this value, right? We're just going to discard it seven, and then four. Then we're going to rank the differences. So I'll do the ranks now. Now, for the ranking, I'm going to use a different color ink here to make sure we're paying attention to it here. But it says, if you look at this, you're going to look at the four, the five, the eight, two, so on and so forth, and find the smallest one, give it rank one. So I'll give that one. Now the next smallest number is number four. We'll actually give that the rank two and three. But since they're the same number, I'm gonna circle those ranks and remind myself I have to go back and change them later, right? Then we're gonna have five as the next number and that'll be rank four and five. And again, I'm going to do something to indicate that those are tied. I'll have to come back and change those. Then we're gonna to need to give something rank six, that'll be this guy. And then finally, something rank seven. Notice that we only have seven values left, right? Because there's seven differences that were not zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So our last rank here in this initial phase should be seven. Then from there, I'm gonna make the adjustments to these tied ranks. So let's look at the circled ranks. Two and three, the average rank there would be two and a half then. So let's call that 2.5. Let's call this 2.5. Then this, between four and five, the average is four and a half. So I'll use 
4.5 and 4.5. Of course here because all of these differences are negative it really doesn't matter if we actually went ahead and did those. It matters more when there's a mixture of positive and negative ranks because we don't want to give say a, um, the negative value 4 and then if we had a positive uh, rank if this was a positive 5 and its absolute value would be 5 but we want to give that the value of the rank of 5 because 4 and 5 would be the same number being ranked with two different uh, ranks that are unequal. That wouldn't be fair to one side or the other, right? So either way, the averaging of the ranks, you know, isn't so important if they're all negative, but we do it anyways as just a practicing technique to make sure we're consistently doing it when it's necessary. All right, now the ranks here will be added up, and since they're all going to be negative here, we can do T negative and just figure that out. And of course, it's obvious that T positive, the rank total for that is zero. There are no positive differences to um, have a total for that category. All right, now for t negative, we basically just add up all these leftover values. Now, I don't even have to add them up. I can tell that they're going to be 7 times 8 divided by 2. Now, 7 times 8 divided by 2 is going to be basically the same as 7 times 4, so it should be 28, my answer here. Let's go ahead and put 28 in, and let's make sure that that's correct. Let's confirm that that's going to be the answer here in this problem. Okay, so let's do it. It's going to be 2.5 plus 4.5 plus 7 plus 1 plus 4.5 plus 6 plus 2.5. And when we're done, we get the answer 28. So that's our solution. Okay, so now that we have those two values, let's go back to our work and see what we're going to say about the uh, test statistics. So the data step yields that t minus is 28 and t positive is 0. The rule when it's a two-tailed test is very easy. Your test stat is equal to t, which is equal to the minimum of t minus comma t positive. So take the smaller of the two values. So in this case, our answer will be zero. So our test stat is t equals zero. Now let's talk about the critical value. In order to do the critical value, we're basically going to go to the table, we're going to look up uh, 0 0.05 in two tails, right? Why two tails? Because they're not equal to, right? And then we're going to look up n is equal to, remember n here was 7. We started out with 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, but the 145 was tied, so we had to discard it and throw it away. So we end up with only n is equal to 7 as the value, right? So 0.05 in two tails, n is equal to 7. Let's go to our table, look it up, get our critical value. And then what we're going to say is we're going to say that we should reject HO if T is less than or equal to T naught. And remember, T naught is our critical value, right? So don't forget that T naught is the critical value. All right, so let's go try to find out what that value is when N is 7 and we're using 0.05 in two tails. Okay, so we're looking at our sign rank test table now. We're looking for n is equal to 7, that's this column here. And we want to pay attention to the 0.05 and 2 tails value. So in 2 tails, 0.05 is the second value in the n equals 7 row. So our t naught value, our t naught value is 2 in that case, because it's 0.05 and 2 tails, n equals 7, and that value is therefore 2. Okay, so we found our critical t naught value to be the value 2, and that is in fact less than our test stat, or sorry, greater than our test stat, which is 0. Remember, our test stat was t equals 0, so 0 is less than or equal to t naught, which was 2, so that means that we do in fact reject HO. So we're going to decide that we should reject HO and then support HA. So since HA is the same as our claim, we're going to use this wording. We're going to say the sample data supports the claim, right? The sample data supports the claim. Okay, and of course the claim here is that the median difference is not equal to zero. So what does that mean in practical terms, right? We use this kind of generic language all the time, and it has a very specific meaning, but what does it mean in practical terms for this problem? Well, basically it says, what do these results say about the test prep industry? Well, what it shows is that just retaking the test will improve your score. 
How do I know that? Well, look at the T negative, it's 28. All the ranks went there, which means that every value except for this one where there was a tie, every one of these values indicated an improvement in the scores when you took the test over, right? So because of that, we were able to reject HO. HO says that the median difference would be zero. And what that means is that, you know, roughly say half the time you would do better and half the time do worse by retaking, which means that really retaking it is sort of a waste of time. There's no serious improvement by just retaking, right? No significant improvement. But in this case, since we rejected HO, we're supporting the idea that there is a significant difference from zero. So in other words, the median is not zero. And because every time the values here were higher than they were the first time, you can conclude that basically um, there's an improvement when you retake the score, a significant improvement. So the question here, what does it say about the test prep industry? Well, it says that you know they have to be honest when they say that they can improve your score. You know, When they say that they're going to improve your score, well, of course, there's no way to compare it if you've never taken the test. Of course, that's easy for the company to claim that your score is better now that you did this prep program before taking it, but there's no way to know. The only way to know for sure is to have you take the test, um, get a certain score, and then do the test prep program and retake the test. But of course, if they're not separating out the effect of just retaking the test, then how do you know their test program is really the reason why your score went up? It could simply be because you retook the test. And so what it says about the test prep industry is that perhaps maybe you know you can save the thousand dollars that it costs to take an LSAT prep course and just retake the, the exam twice if you want to improve your score.